Hi, I'm Musto. And about the video on April 1st, look at this piece of bacon. It's supposed to be an April Fool's video, but come to think of it, I don't really see the fooling part of it. I know, right? Shut up. Maybe it's the fact that I came back after a month and the first video I posted is a video of a bear corn. Astonishing, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to break down this very simple NPR scene. And maybe you'll find some of these tricks useful. I made some changes to the animation itself, so maybe take a look at the new version first. If you are a Ghibli fan like me, you probably know that this scene is inspired by Howl's Moving Castle. Astonishing, isn't it? I used Eevee as the render engine because the shader to RGB will not work in cycles. And now let's take a look at the bacon. The bacon's material has hand-painted texture, and I painted it using Procreate. It's a simple texture, so you may also just use Blender's texture paint using a mouse. Then on top of the texture, I added some two-step shading like this. Additionally, I added outlines to the bacon using inverted hull. And pretty much most of the objects in the scene has outlines as well. There are two shape keys for the bacon. One of the keys makes the bacon move like this, and it's animated from 0 to 1 over the entire animation. The second shape key moves the tips of the bacon, and it's animated using graphs. I've set the keyframe at 0.5 and added a noise modifier on a shape key's graph. Then I adjusted the scale slash frequency and the strength of the noise to make sure it's just a very subtle effect. The reason why I set the keyframe at 0.5 is because the noise goes up and down from this value. If I set it to 0, the value can go negative, which is outside of the range. These two keys create a very subtle movement, but also add a little bit of life to the animation. To add the oil bubbles, we first need to assign a vertex grip on the bacon to specify where the oil comes out, just around the bottom of the bacon. I created a new icosphere for the bubbles and gave it a material that looks like this. A Fresnel node through a math node set to power to adjust the tightness of the gradient, then into a color ramp to change the color. Plug this color into an emission shader and mix it with a transparent BSDF. This way you can make it semi-transparent. Make sure to change the blend mode to alpha blend. On the bacon, I added a particle system and I make sure to clear out all the physics and velocity on it. The particle system is set to render as object, and I chose the oil sphere to be the particle. In the vertex group tab for the particle system, for density, I selected the vertex group that I made previously. For the updated animation, I decreased the number of particles and extended the lifetime of each bubble so they stay on screen a bit longer. It's just a small change to achieve the look that I'm going for. Now, let's take a look at the pan. The base material is made of a principal BSDF with a lower roughness and a darker color. Then I can use the shader to RGB in a color ramp to make it look more like a tune shader. Right here I'm using an HDRI to create these reflections and patterns. But I think I actually like this HDRI from Blender though. Oh well. Multiplying an ambient occlusion allows me to add back some contact shadows. Make sure to enable ambient occlusion in the render settings. This is the base of the pan's material. Here you can see I have three different versions of this material for these three areas. This middle inside part uses only the base, but let's take a look at the outer part. There is an extra layer of gradient added onto the base notes to show the lighting from the fire, which could have been done using texture painting, but <laughs> I'm lazy. And yes, textures are very important in NPR, so don't be lazy like me. Maybe sometimes it's okay, but the orange gradient comes from the Z coordinate, which is from the generated coordinates. But instead of plugging in the Z into the color ramp directly, I used an additional map range node in between to make the gradient softer. Basically, I just keep adjusting the values of the map range until I get the desired results. Lastly, add that gradient on top of the base colors. 
For this part under the bacon, I've multiplied an animated noise texture on top, just to show that there's grease in this area. To animate the noise, I added keyframes on the rotation values of the mapping node here. And I'm using UV coordinates, but you can use generated or object coordinates, so you don't have to unwrap anything. You may also use the 4D noise texture and animate the W value to achieve similar effects. Moving on to the fire, it's basically a plane. Give it a bit of geometry with a subserve, add a solidify for some volume, two displacement modifiers on top, and another subserve to smooth things out. To animate the fire, I have these two displaced along the X and Y respectively. I'm doing X and Y only so it won't poke through the pan through the Z axis. These displaced modifiers use object coordinates which is from an empty that keeps moving up. In the start of the animation, add one keyframe on the empty's location. Then go to the graph editor and add a generator modifier on the Z location. The empty would keep rising forever, but without tweaking any values, the empty goes up really fast. To fix this, we have to control how steep this line is. Hey, do you remember the equation y equals mx plus c? This value here is basically the m in the equation, representing the slope or the steepness. Decrease it towards zero and now the MT moves a lot slower. You can even add a step interpolation modifier to decrease the smoothness of the fire's movement, maybe to give it a more anime look. It's an option, but I think I would keep it smooth in this case. The fire has a basic material. Give some colors to a Fresnel, Plug the color into an emission shader and mix it with a transparent shader. Make sure to use Alpha Blend. For the wooden parts of the scene, I actually mixed in some PBR textures. And yes, sometimes in NPR, it's good to mix in some realistic shading or textures. What we can do is to take the PBR shader, convert it back to color, and further modify the colors and shading using those NPR setups. The ambient occlusion on the wood right here helps create the illusion that the pan is touching the wood, while in fact, they are separated to avoid intersections with the fire. Finally, let's take a look at the camera. I added some depth of field in the updated version, while in the original, I added those blur in post. I created some camera shake by adding keyframes on the camera's location and rotation at the start then added some noise modifiers on the graph of the X and Z locations and X rotation. This time I actually added the step interpolation modifiers to make the camera shake less smooth. It's really optional depending on your style. Making things lower FPS does not mean it automatically becomes more like anime. So remember to only make the changes if it's really needed for your style. I did some compositing and editing on other softwares adding some smoke on top and of course the weird voice over the BGM and sound effects. And it's done. I hope this video has shown something useful to you and hey, this April Fool's video is actually educational. Make sure to get creative with everything. I might try and make more videos this month, maybe different types of videos, but I'll always come back to the 3D stuff. Arigato so much for your support and I will see you in the next video.